Hey everyone, how's it going? Finished getting set up here, and I'll be ready to go. Sorry about that. All right, so you can see I have all these ready to go. What's going on, Brian? So I'm gonna pick all these, try to work through them. There's my pup. <laughs> I got them all set over here. So when I picked them, I honestly haven't, I haven't taken the keys off because I have so many. I don't wanna uh, mix all the keys together and try to sort out a hundred and something locks later. So I'd leave the keys on the shackle here. And I figure I'd just lock them up and pick them as I go along. But I also have these already, which I mixed the keys up and I got right here. So I'm trying to keep things a little separated. But yeah, let's go ahead and start up. And if anybody wants me to gut one, I gladly will. Just let me know. And I'm also selling these so if you're interested in any uh message me let me know i'll give a deal to you before i get them on ebay they're fun little locks when uh the first one i got it only had you know three spools in it the rest were standard there it is there's number one And I've been using top of the keyway tension. I just got so used to it. Luckily, it works out for these locks. So you can see they're definitely similar to like the uh, like an American clone, but the Americans and most of their clones have a, or at least the ones I've experienced have uh, straighted pins in them. These only have spools. Like I just made it a silver set one. No, oh, there we go. There's a spool. First pin right here is our last one. Come on. Oh, not the last one. There we go. So that one. Hey, everyone that just joined. I'm starting to go through them. Got these two done so far. You can see I have them all lined up here. And uh, if this gets boring, we can move on to something else. Honestly, this is just uh, something to do for the meantime, something fun. Two, there's one, number three. There we go. Also, here in a little bit, I could uh, show you all the picks I'm working on. You can see over here, I've got make my own picks. Got them all right there. And I'm uh, working on a new batch right now. We've done a couple weeks. Plan on putting a uh, few of them up for sale on eBay. Haven't done that yet. Thanks. Yeah, this was a, a really fun thing to do. <laughs> I was lucky to find them so cheap. That way, you know, I could uh, pick through them all and uh, get rid of them for cheap too. I saw it was a it was a post on Offer Up from somebody locally that was a little bit out of the way, so I knew nobody would go over there and. I uh, drive out of the way to pick them up, so I have to write on it. All 
And cool. So you're on, uh, Brian, you're on Reddit as well. Yeah, I don't, it's hard to get a, see a crossover from like between Reddit and Twitter and uh, the people that are already are on YouTube. I don't see too much of a crossover there. And then also like uh, the Discord groups as well. There's five. So I'm not paying a lot of attention to. Two. There's one. One, two, no. Five. It's a good one. Right. There. Come here. No. There we go. Uh, hell, we're going to reset this one. Doing it live is a little bit different when you got an audience, but we already need that. Oh, we got three, five, more tension. How's everybody? Uh... <laughs> What's up, Katazi? Yeah, you know, it's uh, I'm a masochist in this sense, and uh, it's fun. And you can actually see that, uh, you know, how I move through them with uh, timing anyway. So you can see it's a little bit, the timing was a little bit realistic, you know. There we go, finally got that one. Yeah, I'm on Discord too. I Actually, I want to be on Discord more often. Uh, I really like it. <laughs> yes, open I really like Discord. Discord's great for um, when you want uh, like quick responses on something, and um, uh, people interact with right then and there. So if you got questions, and they got some nice channels on there too. So if you want to like, you know, they got the channels where if you want to sell your locks, you got the uh, um, informational channels, just the BS channels, the impressioning. Um, they got safe cracking, but you got to be invited to that one. Uh, they got quite a bit. I really like. Uh, discord that's just it's a whole separate i guess because it's not on a browser it's harder to remember to log on and pay attention to it there we go open i was way back there standard pin in the back yeah i am a fan of heavier tension in general i use uh too heavy of tension and uh, the post I just made on Reddit, someone uh, mentioned that, you know, uh, they put too much tension on and they said that their hands will start hurting. And I've actually had a problem with my hands starting to hurt, uh, you know, the past year more so than anything. So I'm a programmer and, you know, I'm always on the keyboard and mouse anyway. So I've taken the, uh, whether I'm, you know, I'm heavy handed uh, naturally with my tension, but I take that every time that my hand starts feeling a little bit sore or starts hurting that, uh, I need to let off my tension. That's my sign of I need to relax. <laughs> yeah, I have a um, I have a see-through um, safe lock. Um, what is it? S and G uh, sixty-six seventy, I believe, like the beginner three three wheel lock. And I um, bought those and I actually made a uh, acrylic back backing to it so I could see how the wheels work as I'm. Uh, sitting there practicing. That way I can also look behind it and make sure that when I, I am feeling something that is actually what I'm feeling. And that's been awesome. If you buy a safe, you know, lock off eBay or something, just buy a cheap piece of um, plexiglass from your uh, hardware store and just cut it and drill some holes through it and throw it on the back. And it's, it's amazing. But yeah, typically heavy hand attention, that's become more of a problem with the uh, the higher locks they move up to, too, because I'm getting into uh, Medica right now with the um, uh, sidebars and stuff. And those require very precise tension and constant adding and uh, removing tension while picking as well. 
So the heavy handedness kind of bites me in the ass in that sense. There we go. Here's a nice one. And then also doing it live because there are people watching. I'm just, I'm definitely hand, heavy handed right now. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that LPL say that as well, and that made me feel a little bit more comfortable about it because, yeah, I don't mind too heavy attention because the feedback I get, but then, yeah, you want to let off just the right amount where you're not, you know, overdoing it, causing too much stress in your hands, but you still get that great feedback. Oh, how's this a spool? Another spool. Too excited every time I get one. Oh, yeah, I saw those spare safe trainers. I've been curious about those. Those look really nice. Those came out about right after I got mine off of uh, eBay. There we go. And my, uh, my first time um, uh, learning about safes was my first lock fest here in uh, Seattle. That was really cool. I believe... Yeah, that was my first Lockfest. And then uh, my first impressioning was also at Lockfest um, last year as well. And that was really cool. If you guys haven't been to any of the uh, the big fun lock conventions, get involved. It is so much fun. And actually, because uh, being there, even local meetups are fun because just being around people that do it too and being able to share ideas and just bullshitting about it in general is makes it so much more fun. That's the time where you can actually uh, nerd out. Yeah, Aaron, that was a great time. <laughs> that was fun. I, I really missed that. That was awesome. What's that? Aaron, were you there at the one where uh, Deviant put the, the good whiskey in the uh, the lockbox and we had to pick the lock to get the whiskey, the uh, uh, very uh, Perry Van Winkles? Ah, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, that's cool that you can make it graduating. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah, Taz, you man, just even check for local meetups in your area. Like uh, a lot of the people I talk to on Twitter and stuff, where we do local meetups and. It's just awesome having somewhere in a, a people to go to in general. Because they typically do about a once in a week kind of thing. And then also some people, when they do the meetups too, uh, they'll make like a goal that day. So someone might bring in a lock and they'll gut it and explain it and how it works. It's really freaking cool. Yeah, I'm sure there's some in Texas too, Brian. Um, the tool website has, uh, I believe they have a lot of um, the, uh, the listing of the local uh, tool chapters where they have the meetups and stuff. So uh, it's T-O-O-O-L. Yeah, three O's. Let's see, do I have one of their stickers in front of me? I don't. But they have a lot of great info on there, especially like legality and stuff with, like that too. Oh, cool. Four fences. That's really cool. I need to check out that safe lock a little more. Uh, yeah, I've heard about the tool ch uh, Chicago chapter. There we go. Those are all the ones. Let's see. That's nine done. Those are all the ones that I had without keys that are mixed up. So... I'm going to move on the ones with keys. All these are still unlocked, and I, I leave the keys on the thing just so I don't get them mixed up. But obviously, I can't see the keys, so give me a little leeway there. <laughs> yeah, I, honest, I can't wait till we can get back to meetings again and conferences. Like, I was really excited about Lockfest this year, and unfortunately, it just wasn't going to pan out. 
I know hell everybody is excited about Lackfest again this year. Last year's is so much fun. I forget which year it was too. Thanks, Brian. I forget which year it was too. I don't believe it was last year, but one of the years, um, the someone brought in a master clock or something, and we wanted to see its uh, heat tolerances. So we actually went out on the street in Seattle with the blowtorch, put this lock on the ground, and just melted it right there. <laughs> so you see all these guys coming out of a building with a blowtorch and a lock surrounding this lock with um, – uh, you know, cameras, everybody videotaping it and just melting it in the middle of the street. It was amazing. Oh, cool. I'll have to check out that law one. I saw, um, I forget his name, one of the, one of the big guys in Tool, that uh, ex-cop and detective and stuff like that's given some law talk. And uh, he partnered with uh, someone else. There was a good law talk at one of the... Uh, uh, lock fest but yeah the more info the better i think in the past i have myself posted some uh law information on uh, lock pickers uk uh board that i think they pinned on there so hopefully that's still there as well and in general the laws of my state yeah jack that's it that's him yeah and then in general because of that uh talk that jack uh gave too um he pointed out that, and that's something that makes a lot of sense. He pointed out that cops in general, they don't really know the laws behind lock picking. So they're, they'll side on the, um, they'll err on the side of, Hey, you know, this clearly doesn't look good. And it's, you know, a lot of people, it doesn't look good. A lot of people and they'll treat it as the, you know, as a crime when it's not. So I carry the laws in my uh, car. I have them printed out for my car and I also have them printed out to carry in my backpack that I just carry all my locks and stuff with all the time, just in case, because I carry everything so often that I just want to be safe, you know? Oh, I thought that was going to be an open. That was just a good set there. Yeah, true. Yeah, not just lock picking either. Yeah, agreed. In general, there's so many, when it comes to police and dealing with kind of oddities and stuff like that, there's one thing, I've had a lot of law in my family, and in general, my dad was a lawyer, so I know that cops in general, like, you got to think, you know, I'm not trying to bash them, but they don't have a lot of time to learn the laws in school like lawyers do, and there's a lot of oddities in law. There's a lot to law, and to try to remember all these little odds and ends while they're out, you know, is, uh, it's damn near impossible, really, you know? So it's good to have the laws on you. Yeah. Preston sounds really familiar too. I believe I've met him before too. I'm not sure, but it just sounds familiar. But yeah, better safe than sorry. I like that people are posting law a lot more. And I'll have to check out that talk. That's the first pin here. There we go. First pin was binding. Go. It's five. It's three. I'm not picking my attention tool here. There's one. These are pretty, um, these locks in general are great for feedback. Like when one is binding, you know, and if one is not fully set, you, you pretty much know. My talking while doing this doesn't help a whole lot, but these have great feedback on them. Like, especially if you're get, just starting to get into uh, security pins and stuff, these only have three spools. I feel like I may have dropped a few in here. Um, you know, I don't use bottom of the keyway tension too much, but 
I have been successful. Like they have the same kind of build as a um, a pro series guard on the bottom. Kind of similar guard. In fact, okay, no, just a little bit different. But I find that I can do bottom of the QA tension on these at times. So honestly, I guess it's kind of hit and miss for me. Taz, you're asking about the Morris or the um, uh, the um, the Master Pro series I just showed. Like these compared to Americans, these are easier because they only have three spools and no serrated pins in it. So that's why I think these are these Morris locks right here. These would even be a better step before going to the. Oh, I got it. Good thing I got it before the tension wrench fell out. These would be a good step to go to before even the Master Pro series. So the way I see it in my head, I like if I were to go back and I knew this, knew these locks beforehand, I would have picked, and if I had access to this lock first. <laughs> oh, I love spools. But yeah, I agree. Serrated is usually easier. But if I would uh, write my or do it in order to like progress, I would do these first because they have three spools, and because yeah, I find I find serrated just a little bit easier, and spools are the feel that you really the thing you really want to get a feel for. I would do these first because they only have three spools. I would do the Master Pro Series second because they have spools and serrated pins in it, but both their spools and their serrated uh, pins are from the ones I've gutted are a little bit more shallow, so they're not as deep, so they're a little bit easier than the American locks. And then I would go to the uh, typical American 1100s because I find that their serrations are a little bit deeper than the Pro Series. And yeah, I know they take the same pens and all, but just from gutting them in my experience, that's what I've seen. And I don't know if it's because they're assembled in different factories or what, but if you look back through the videos I had, the Pro Series uh, pens are just a little different than the, the Americans when you got them from stock anyway. If I just over set there or what? I thought that was a spool. If I didn't set too much. Okay, here we go. Back in the back. There we go, that's five, here's three, two, and one. Here, yeah, little bastard. One more, oh, four, there we go. So you can see that we have what? All these done. That's yeah, four, four, nine, thirteen out of the way. Probably take just a little bit longer if I were to go through all these in five hours. This time, kind of reset them and all, but and while talking live. I should actually do a gut of one of these real quick, just because I've only gutted one. And just to clarify that every single one of these is only three spools. <laughs> Actually, Aaron, it, it kind of does in a bit. So one, it's, it throws me off my, my game being live for sure. And then um, I've really enjoyed picking at the top of the mountains now. Yeah, at the end of my hikes because I just hiked up there with this lock that I haven't picked on camera yet, which are getting progressively harder. And so you have to get the shot, right? So you have to get it right. So when I'm up there, I find that that pressure, and because there's like usually not a whole lot of other people around, just me and uh, my girlfriend or, you know, one other hiker, you know, keeping distance and all, I find that I focus really deeply and I can focus really well. And um, just because of the pressure and, that usually actually helps out a little bit. And I think it's because 
just the peace of everything around me at the moment too. Cause it's, you just got done getting your ass kicked going up the mountain. <laughs> like, Oh, now I can relax. It's a, uh, yeah. That's going to get in increasingly harder. Cause yeah, I'm running out of locks where it's like, okay, I know I can for sure pick that, you know, within an hour up there. Cause I'm not trying to sit up there all day either to try to get a shot. Sometimes, yeah, can take uh, two or three shots to try to get it. Cause it's, you're already, you're just so exhausted. <laughs> Some heavy tension. I'm not feeling anything in it. There we go. There's two. There's one. Five. There we go. This one I'll try to. Oh, all my gutting tools are behind this big stack of locks. So maybe I won't gut one right away. I think that through ahead of time. Yeah, hell, let's reset this one. Fly through it faster if I just reset it. Oh. One thing I'd like to know too, if there's anything I haven't done or on my videos, how-to videos or stuff you'd like to see in general explained or anything, uh, let me know. So I, I really like doing those. Those are fun. And I think we need more informational videos online. I really like that uh, Lock Noob has done some more uh, videos recently of uh, essential tools and stuff to help make stuff. You know, it's kind of stuff that you learn as you're getting into it. Oh, that just reset everything. I'm being too heavy handed on my tension. Turn to multitask. Open one. Pin four. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, I actually got all these on uh, an app called OfferUp. It's like a, it's like eBay, or not eBay. It's like a Craigslist, basically. And uh, I keep track of that and a couple other apps. And I saw someone put um, all these up for sale, and I pitched a price for them. I got a, I get, I got a hundred and a hundred and sixteen of these for two hundred dollars. So just a little bit over, um, yeah. The, a little less than two dollars a piece, basically. It, basically, it, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was someone that just. Um, it looks like someone that was into commercial stuff and really just didn't know how much they were worth, and we're trying to get rid of them. They had just a lot of stuff, and so, yeah, definitely jumped on top of it. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, and this would be fun, and I plan on uh, the other thing too. Is like. You know, with my videos, it's like, okay, these would be great for giveaways, too. It's like, I got a good price. Um, you know, distribute them because I haven't really seen these yet. So it'd be a, another great American, uh, uh, you know, clone to distribute in the Locksport community. And then also uh, do giveaways and just get them moving. I think we've already, um, yeah, three of them I sold uh, were to uh, Dune. So we got some for our Seattle chapter. Uh, for the group. Which one am I missing here? Talking and not paying attention a whole lot. Is... There we go. I kind of wish I could, oh, there we go, wish I could um, have everybody's video on here, too, just to have a, almost like a conference call. That'd be fun. I like the uh, 
the meetup aspect where I can like really interact with people. Here, let's just go ahead and lock a few of these, have them ready. And if you're interested in any of these, again, uh, PM me. Aaron, yes, absolutely. Uh, more than ever, I I feel like a better lock picker because I have been doing that. I've had to really stop and slow down to um, focus on the pins and stuff to remember what is doing what and what is where um, because getting onto the sidebars, uh, working on sidebars. So like uh, a slag primus here, these are kind of the easier, you know, security, but you keep track of your top pins. That way you know when to go onto the sidebar, you know. Uh, same thing with uh, Medico. I've um, been doing this one right here. You can see I got some of the pins out right now. And I've been, so first I've been doing counter rotation on a keyway. And you want to keep track of uh, which pins you've rotated already and, um, you know, how much the rotation that causes. And you want to have an idea of when, all of them are rotated properly, how much rotation that causes, because then you know you can start picking the pins normally, you know, up and down. So in general, with these higher locks, security locks, even I would go as far as even saying pack locks, doing these because they're six pins. Um, the tension's different. These are harder for me than American locks just because the tensioning. So getting these, I've had to really pay attention to uh, what I've already done and what I haven't done. That way I don't overset them. Because, yeah, uh, whenever I'm picking, I use too much uh, tension when I'm, you know, setting the pin up in general. Anyways, that's something I really have to watch for. So, yeah, oversetting is a real problem for me. So I really, so I'm not just going in there, you know, pushing each pin again. I really try to pay attention to what pins I've already set. And because of that, mental, mentally mapping that each time it's gotten a lot easier. It's it's definitely a practice you have to sit down to do, but it's gotten a lot easier, and so I naturally do it a little bit more without thinking about it now. Yeah, Brian, I'm on Facebook. Let's see. I'll, uh, sure. If you go to my, uh, I believe it's in my YouTube profile. If you go there, you can see the link to my Facebook and Twitter and everything. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. The Avis 83, I've actually, it's a goal for me to sit down and play with a little bit more again. I've, I picked a lot of them and a lot of them with uh, like different cores in them, like this one right here. I have an 83. Um, I have a Yale GA uh, uh, core in it and it has some, as you can see, it has a hell of a bidding to it too. And still just the tension on these are such a pain in the ass for me to get right. I, I can get them, but then I can't. And I, I have another Yale 83 here. These are, uh, yeah, I believe it's a triple eight keyway. <clears throat> see if I can get that to focus. There we go. So the keyway on this is a real, real pain in the ass. You can see how jagged it is if it lights. But yeah, it's really jagged. And trying to get that tension on it while doing that is just a, God, it's a pain in the ass. And also, again, because this one has those high sets on them. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of feel maybe a little bit of the same. I, I like spools in the sense that I know when they're set. And the thing that screws me up on the serrated pins is because I use, use too much picking for, sometimes I'll overset the hell out of them. Here, I'm gonna. And the Avis 83 is like kind of a beast. I really, <laughs> I don't blame you <laughs> at all. Here, I'll put my contact info in here real quick. Now oh, we can reach me, Brian.
There you go. So you can reach me on one of those. <laughs> oh man, I've got so many locks in the a bucket list anymore. It's it's a little dangerous, especially when you consider lock sport can get expensive quick. Yeah, lock sport can get expensive quick because it gets exciting. You, you get those, you get one of those locks that you pick, especially like say, uh, uh, you get your first Avis eighty three. You know, you get your first American eleven hundred, and you're like. Oh hell! I need all the models of that now. That way, you know you've picked through them all, and that gives you know because you already get that sense of accomplishment. You've you know, you know, dominated one, then you want to dominate them all. <laughs> That's kind of why I've I've got a on my fence over there. I got I just got every model of everything. It's just it's a feeling of accomplishment. That's definitely. Or set that one. So there's one. Get up there. There we go. There's three. There's five. And four. There. What's up, Lock Kickings gal? Welcome. Oh, Aaron, that's a girlfriend, man. You got a keeper. <laughs> that is that is a keeper. If she's clearing out bookshelf for you to put locks in, man. I know my girlfriend, she uh walked in my house and she was like, You got a lot of locks. <laughs> I was like, it's okay, you could say it. I have too many locks. <laughs> Thanks for joining Left Pickings, gal. You can see that uh picked through some over here already. Got them all lined up here and it's working through them. Take a little bit longer with the talking going on at the same time, but like I've told everybody, if you're interested in these, send me a, a PM. I'm gonna put these on open. There we go. I'll put them on eBay soon, but I'm trying to get them out to the Locksport community uh, for a good deal before that. So I'd like to share these out there. Pretty much American clones with three spools in them, and uh, the rest are driver pens. There's really no serrateds in them. Like maybe I should try to move these locks and got another one of these real quick, just to confirm that that's what's inside. Because the I've only gutted one, and that's what I saw. There we go. That one was pretty quick. I'll do this one real quick and see if I can get that stuff out. And then here shortly, uh, yeah, Katazi, it was good, good talking to you. Have a good one. See you around. Yeah, here shortly in a minute, I'll, uh, show the picks I'm working on too. I got one of these real quick. Show the picks I'm working on. There's one. There's that. It's like. Five, there we go. Four, no. Got the feedback, and these are just great. <laughs> Thanks, LPG. Thanks for the support. Be awesome to join a live stream of yours, too. I can't imagine you'd get nothing but just a crap ton of people joining up. And it'd be cool to see more people doing these. I, I find it a great way to kind of like Locksport meetups, getting people together and BSing and enjoying it. There we go. There's two. Let's see if I can move these out of the way and get these pins, my gutting tools out real quick. It's got so many of these locks. <laughs> I think we'll just 
put one back here. Some of these out of the way. And it's so hard to manage so many at the same time. I need people to take these off my hands. <laughs> there we go. Okay, got my follower. And these. Oh, that's awesome. You got yourself a keeper too then. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm gonna need a big living room too. Uh, my future house is definitely gonna keep all of this in mind. I feel like, uh, who's it I've seen? Um, is it Albert LaBelle and a couple of the other guys? Their, their lock picking rooms that they have. I feel like I'm just gonna in general need a yeah, a lock picking room. Well, it does this little bolt there. There we go. This little bolt did not want to come out. These are all greased up pretty good too. I hate getting grease all over myself, so clean that off real quick. Oh, um, it looks like the lock picking community just has <laughs> good significant others. Everybody's letting letting their significant other put their locks everywhere. That's a that's some support right there. Boy, this C clip is just being a pain in the ass. Get this off the first time. It's such a pain. Jeez. There we go. That's a follower. I've had this follower forever. I actually had it 3D printed for me like three years ago. Oh, it doesn't quite. Yeah, I'll show it doesn't quite fit the hole. You can see that little gap in there. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, let's try to get this out. It's getting stuck in the the grooves of the... I think we're actually missing a pin in this one. There we go. Oh, weird, we are. Check this out. It's one, two... Three is missing. Where's my pick here? Oh, wow, this is different. Oh, these are different. Okay, so this is really odd. Okay, no, that's just a master pen stuck to it. I thought that was serrated at first, but that was a master pen stuck to the top one. So. See if we can get that focus there. So, yeah. This was actually missing the third pin completely. So let's do the uh, top pins, see what those are now. One, two. Oh, wow. Three did have a. What the hell? I'm missing something. That's weird. Okay. And five. There we go. How did that work? I have to be missing something. I wonder if... Oh, I see. Oh, weird. It was the way I picked it. I screwed it up. Okay. So here it is now. Sorry, the angle on the camera is a little weird. There we go. So what it looks like happened on the third pin is I pushed it all the way up into the Bible. I overset it so much that I overpicked it. So it looked like it wasn't even the bottom of the keyway, but it was there. Yeah, that was weird. That's honestly been the first time I've ever gotten one where uh, I've 
<clears throat> picked it so much that it was up in the Bible. But yeah, you can see that it's still, uh, oh, well, lost them all. Uh, three spools. So, okay, they're pretty consistent. Three spools with master painting in them. And I'll just set this to the side and deal with getting that all back together later. Man, I'm, I'm glad to see that that driver pin was up there in the Bible because that was really wacky to not see it that way. Oh, that's a good idea, Aaron. Yeah, no joke. I haven't tried that yet. Um, Yeah, so let's give it a shot. Let's see if this will fit. I have a couple of them, I believe. I have yet to uh, pick something with a comb pick yet. I'm not sure if these teeth will be. I wonder if this one's too thick. Let's see. Let's pull out all my tension wrenches. I might have another. Yeah, here we go. So my box of tension wrenches. Show these real quick. You can see I got windshield wiper blades in there. I have um, music wire in there. I have all the other generic ones in here. I have them all separated by uh, and labeled off. You can see like that. Because <clears throat> you need different widths and thicknesses for different keyways and stuff. So, yeah, this comb pick looks like it's a little smaller. Stuff like that. Let's see. No, oh, it fits in. Um, I don't believe these would count as a blue belt. I had the same question on um, Reddit, and I believe these would be a yellow or orange belt. Because I saw the, I believe it's American clones that are blue belts. But the way the yellow belt's described is you're picking better locks now, and some of them may be security pins. And then the orange belt is like, okay, you are picking security pins. And these only have three spools in them. And there's no serrations at all. So uh, my answer to that question was uh, it's worth asking an admin, but I don't believe, I don't think it will be a blue belt. It's getting in there, but it's not getting on the keyway very well. Let's see if we can jiggle it up there somehow. This will definitely fit. It's moving that one up in there. Oh, there we go. Oh, come on. Let's see if it gets up in there now. So we got it. I have it up in the keyway area now. Let's just see if I can finish setting it. Ah, uh, the blue belt. Okay, let's see. I could probably give you a good suggestion for the blue belt. I forget which one I did for it. I think it was the, maybe the Mako 427 is what I did for my blue belt. So there's the belt info, belt ranking. Yeah, here we are. Blue belt. Ah, the American 1100. Yeah, the American 1100 is a good one. The American 5200s, I think, are, in my opinion, the 5200s I've got have been easier. Oh, man, I feel like this is so close. It's just not getting it. I wonder if it's like the bidding. Oh, these are all short, too. These are all short bidding. If we're going to get it on any lock, it'll be this one. Maybe not under the back pin. Yeah, the, also, yeah, looking at the blue belt, the Mako 427s are really good, too. I really like those. Yeah. So yeah, the American or the Makos. OK. 
Come on. So that one's first. So I just don't think the keyway is working or the core is working out for it. Because it's not only the first one's going up in the keyway. It's on the American lock ones. So yeah, I got me a blank American core here. See that? It goes all the way up in the... There we go. See that goes all the way up in the keyway on this one. Oh, where's actually that core, the one I just gutted? That's a good test right there. So we have an empty core right here. Oh, so it does go all the way up in this core, too. It's just a matter of getting it right. I don't doubt that you could definitely use a comb pick on these. So I feel like that should be my goal now. Yeah, I actually I love the Makos in general. The 427s had great feedback on them, and they're just smooth, crisp locks through the whole way of picking it, and I love that about that. Just need to get the end of this thing back over the keyway again. Here we go. First one's going in. Here, I'll leave that to this side. We'll come back to that one. Give a little break on that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think these can be picked with a comb. As, as we saw with the, the, um, the core itself, it fits right up in there. And here, while we're taking a break from the little marathon, let's see. I'm not sure how far this will reach, but thanks for the link, Aaron. Yeah, let's see if this can reach over here. I'll give you a view at some of my picture real quick I'm working on. So you can see here. So you can see I've got them all lined up. I did some mixed woods this time. You can see on the far right, and I got some mixed blacks and reds here. Got some different ones going on here. You can see up there, I got some mixture of woods and brasses going. And then over here, you can see my gate of locks, all my different metals and stuff. And for people that are looking for something cool too, that are just wanting to have a nice little lock stand, this is what I, uh, something I found a good idea. This is a jewelry hanger. You can hang your jewelry on. So what I did was, is I took some uh, music wire that fits in these holes, and I just bent it in the shapes of S's, and now I have a nice little lock stand next to my couch here. And also at the bottom, I keep uh, little cores on there. So I just took uh, these little Velcro wraps, left the hole open like that, wrapped them around the core, and I can just hang those on the bottom. So this is my little station for when I'm picking... Sorry about all the movement there. I know that can be a little much. Yeah, Makos are awesome. I love them. They, they're really fun. I also really like that um, now they will uh, engrave your name on them. So if you order, for anybody that's watching them, they, they're being awesome right now. If you order it, in your request, they'll put your logo or whatever and your name on the back of the locks. Here's um, here's my last order. They came out with these nice blue ones right here. And so you can see my logo on the back. I know the uh, the screen videos flipped, but yeah. And that, that was for free. And these are, God, they're just freaking awesome. I love the feel of them. Thank you. Yeah, it's ever since, I don't know if you've been doing anything with pick handles at all, uh, lock picking go, or if you're still working with basic picks like these, but I'm telling you, just even doing like a, a basic glue of like micarta or something that's easy to sand off to make, just
just a simple pick handle that's even like this, just generic. These bigger pick handles have been a lifesaver and a big, a big up in my picking game in general. It's been so much easier to, because of the feel of it, rotate your pick in there easier without, you know, these where if you're rotating it, you accidentally, you know, it kind of slips to the side real hard, real quick and sets everything. These just handles have been a life changer for my hands and just picking stuff and feeling it. Oh, it's, it's amazing. That's why I uh, actually keep a look out too. one of my, uh, I'm actually working on a video, all the um, handles that you saw that I'm working on and the ones here, I'm doing a video, a how to video on how to make those. So if you're curious on how to uh, keep an eye out for that. Cause I definitely, I mean, handles just make so much of a difference. Now, if there's anything that, uh, again, for any viewers, new or old, anything that you want to see, any how-tos or anything like that, uh, let me know. I, I love to do that kind of stuff, and it kind of pushes me to dig in and learn a little bit more myself. Go open. This one lost its key. I think it might be right there. We'll see. We'll hook it on there anyway keeping the keys on these that way I don't lose them because mixing these all together would just be a hellacious nightmare trying to sort out later so I got this in the back here there we go four Thanks, Brian. Huh. Let's see. Good question, Aaron. Let me get this one real quick, and I'll pull that lock back up that I just got in. So one thing I haven't honestly paid a whole lot of attention to is because I'm typically a picker. I haven't tried paying attention to a whole lot of the other exploits a lot. I have shims. I have them all. But... I honestly, I just keep forgetting to pay attention to that. And I've tried it a few times. I have been unsuccessful in my shimming attempts so far. But I'd like to pay attention to that more. There's that pen. There it is. Pen five. One, three, two. Three. One of these is not always set. More overset, maybe? Well, that was pin one. That's the problem I have with pin, with using top of the keyway tension is I tend to forget about pin one, and pin one can just be a pain in the ass to get sometimes. There we go, there's pin four. Nope. Oh, pin five. There we go. Pin five is set. Four is good. Three. There we go. Let's get that. Here's all of our pick ones over here. Set these over to the side. Try to get them orderly at least. And let's check that lock for the ball bearings. Yeah, it does look like there are ball bearings down in there. So I'm not going to take the, uh, the actuator out, but I can see down in the hole right there that they are ball bearings. And so next let's look at then they look like closed. Check out their tolerances that sense. The top looks pretty solid with the uh that's hard to get this on. 
I'm on like I'm the only thing the picture zoom in here. There we go. Yeah, the top looks pretty solid with its with the holes on it. So there's not a whole lot of room there. But a thin enough shim, maybe. And my shims are also behind all the locks, so I can't pull one out and try it. Or can I? Um, I don't, uh, lock picking scale, I don't think these do use um, American master lock pins. They use the same size, but um, typically master lock pins, have, or no, American pins have serrated um, uh, key pins, and they also have serrated driver pins. And also, um, I've noticed, and similar to the same with the uh, Master Lock Pro series, but I've noticed that the pins in these ones, the spools in these Morse locks are, uh, they're longer spools than uh, the American spools are. So I think it's a, they come from a different manufacturer. Here, I'll get a, an American spool to show you. American spool here. And I also believe the, the key pins maybe look a little bit more pronounced in the American locks. So the smaller one is the American spool here. And here's the one that came out of the Morris lock. And let's see. Let's see if I can also get these key pins. Yeah. yeah, to me it looks like, there we go, well, maybe they're about the same, or I thought the, yeah, I think they're about the same, so maybe American's not a little bit more pronounced at the bottom there, but you can see that even the American, they have the serrations on the top. And another thing, too, is that, for instance, that when I just got in, most <clears throat> Americans, when they have the smaller pins, they also have these serrations on them. Whereas they get really small, about 0.1255, then they no longer have serrations on them. Okay, I'll give you a close-up view. Here's my American penning kit. Yeah, they got the same size pins, but I'm not sure if they're, unless, I mean, unless I'm just uh, completely lacking knowledge because I have only bought American Master Lock pins from uh, CLK Supplies. And so maybe, you know, there's the chance that it could be American Master Lock pins because they're the same size and it's just different manufacturers have different kinds. But so far from what I've seen, um, it doesn't seem like it throughout all the uh, American Master Locks that I've got it anyway. Just doesn't fit the trend. That one was quick. Anybody have uh, 2020 goals for lock picking? The American locks, you can, I'm not sure if, I believe the cores, I'm not sure if the master has the same exact core. There's another open as American, but you can swap out the cores for other American cores. So, I mean, for instance, like uh, I keep the, my one in my drawer up here. And if I ever wanted to key it up and just have a quick swap out for a different lock, I can do that. So this 
American Hot Coral fit in any one of them. But I'm not sure what other cores really fix. A lot of the other small cores too, to keep in mind is the way the actuator works in the back. So you can see how when this one is set this way, that piece right there that turns the actuator is faced like that. Whereas I believe maybe it's the, I could be wrong, maybe it's the master lock ones. This half moon is actually, that half moon right there that turns the actuators on top. So it's covering half the keyway. <laughs> <laughs> asking for somebody who isn't me. <laughs> so yeah, um, there are a lot of cores the size that could fit in it, but the actuator doesn't quite work the same because the uh, the tailpiece here is uh, put on differently or uh, in a different position. Let's see, I actually have a Pro Series here. So actually, let's go ahead and take this Pro Series core out. We can just compare it to the Pro Series real quick. And that is an awesome goal. That's initially what I had as well, uh, was to move into safe manipulation this year. And that changed from doing that, to trying to get 100 videos up before a year end and um, picking Medicos. And my Medicos <clears throat> are at picking, uh, I'm able to pick four pins right now, and uh, I just can't get the fifth pin. So yeah, actually, yeah, the master locks do have a different way of their actuator. So I see the Master Pro Series here and the American Locks have similar pins, a uh, little bit more lightly serrated with the Pro Series. But you can see the cores here. See that the Pro Series has the actuator at the top, the half moon at the top, whereas American has it on the side. But overall, you can see that they're pretty similar in size. So I would say interchangeable to an extent. And if you get your first safe manipulation, you should make a video on it, dude. That would be awesome. Especially for like your first video. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to make a video on safe manipulation in general because you have to really have a feel for it and to get it done in time for not having too long of a video. <clears throat> I haven't whole, watched a whole lot of videos of people doing that yet. <laughs> yeah, you have good content, though. I like your content, specifically. <laughs> make it always make yourself a, a lock-picking handle. Yeah, I haven't seen Bosnian Bills yet. I actually haven't watched Bosnian Bill a whole lot in a while. But I know if I ever want to... If there's a lock that I have a hard time finding, I can usually go to LPL or... Bosnian Bill's channel to find it. One of those one-off odd locks, you know. Pin one. Here and there. There we go. And we have pin two. Pin three. Four. What's left? There we go. Moving these around, losing some keys. See, see they have the American keyways. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's wild. Not too often you hear about someone take down a video. Man, that sucks. I try to watch out for the... Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious as to why. 
I try to watch out for what I say on here, and I'm always welcome to be corrected. So if there's anything I ever say, oh yeah, Keymaster. Okay. Yeah, Keymaster. Yeah, he's on. Uh, I see him on my channel. Yeah. Okay, y'all check out Keymaster. I don't worry about getting called out so much because <clears throat> I try my best to to portray, you know, good information, and not, you know, deceive people. And I'm always up for. Um, I'm always up to learn, so I hope that whenever people are watching this, that I'm not trying to say everything as this is final word. Please, if there's ever anything wrong, let me know, because the more information, the better. I'm a, uh, I'm a sponge in that sense, you know. Uh, I mean, I guess it's hard to be making thousands of videos and not have one go wrong. I think I've taken down... Maybe one video. It was a past medical keyway. It didn't have medical pins in it. And uh, I picked it. It had a different keyway than medical in it. And when I gutted it, <clears throat> I finally figured out how to gut it after the video. When I picked it, it didn't have all the pins in it. So I took it down out of like, okay, like I didn't pick that lock, you know, clearly like I thought I did. And it was. It's that that medico is actually still disassembled because it's it's one of those older style uh, brass body locks that are just a real pain in the ass to, to gut. So I took that as a loss and I'm just no big deal, you know. Hey everyone who just joined. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's what I'd kind of expect is uh, a video explaining what happened. Like, if you're if you're purposely deceiving somebody and you get caught, that's one thing. But like, if you're not doing something and you get called out for something that you didn't notice, like nobody gives a damn that much. Just you know, say what you did, get moving with it. It's still wild. You don't hear about someone like that getting. I'm going to try to do the comb pick on this again. This definitely fits the, the core properly. I wonder if I'm just not getting it far enough back in there. So it fits, let's see. Maybe help get a visual how far that has to be in there first. So we're trying to comb it right now. It fits in the core fine. Try to put it back further before moving it up into the keyway. <clears throat> I heard it set one, but here we go. Now it's up in the keyway. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just not getting it up into the Bible. I just wonder, and this is one that it should work on because these are definitely short pens. I don't know. I'm not going to give up on that. I have to, because I haven't combed anything yet, because I know it fits, and it should work in this key. I have to get that at some point, so I'll just, I'll get a picture of it <laughs> and post it to Twitter and uh, Facebook and all when I finally get it, but these are definitely combable. I just think maybe me not used to doing it is part of the problem with not getting it. Yeah. <clears throat> 
And if there's anything else you guys are interested in seeing, I'm more than up to it. Because I know this same lock over and over can, you know, <laughs> get a little boring. Here, I'll show you, uh, show you some of the locks I'm working on uh, for videos right now. Got this Avis 3 Star. <clears throat> Gotten close to picking this one, but this pin in the back here has been a pain in the ass. Eurovox is pretty new to me. Got this fun Sergeant Asta Alloy. I forget, I think it's an uh, XC. Yeah, that's what it is. You can see on the side here how it has that, but it looks like maybe sidebar on it. So I'm getting ready to learn that one in my endeavor for uh, my uh, sidebar endeavor. Oh, uh, not leaving locks in frame. That's something I'm having a hard time remembering. <clears throat> I honestly don't care that much because a lot of these videos I'm doing for fun. And, you know, I know I did it. Uh, although the videos when I went to prove, like, oh, I definitely picked this badass lock and I'm going for a belt and something like that. I definitely got to keep it in frame. I'm more conscious about it in general because I want to keep it in frame. But in my videos, like, if I leave frame for a second or if it's kind of out of frame, like, almost like right here because I'm out on a hike and it's kind of a little bit out of frame like that, but you can still see what I'm doing. I try not to get a little too, you know, upset about that. <clears throat> but I do remember that video and it's something I've kept in mind. And I honestly don't even keep it in mind when watching other people's videos that often. But I also don't think I watch too many other people's videos, a lot of people that I know, the videos I watch, they definitely have displayed their, their skill in doing stuff, so I have faith in what they're doing. Pin one was a spool. Pin two, no. Pin three, there we go. Pin four, it's a nice set. Spool, there we go. So four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, four, two, five, twenty-six. So we got twenty-six out of the hundred and thirteen, and now we're fifteen minutes. While talking and doing a few other things, seems like we're still doing about the same timing as before. <clears throat> about two or three minutes a lock. Four, three, that was set. Heck, it's going to be a task just to go through all these and reset them again. Yeah, they're all still sitting here picked. Time consuming just to reset the damn clasp. And thanks again for everybody joining. If there's any future ideas for some live streaming events or fun or even competitions or something odd to make it more fun, that can do with viewers or you guys. Give me ideas. Something more interactive, you know. It's too bad you can't post pictures in the comments, although that's kind of opened a can of worms there. Yeah. So four times six. Yeah. Oh, it's seven times four. Twenty-eight. So that'll be twenty-nine. And 
five. And four. See the counter rotation on these is nice. Good feedback. Thanks, Lock Pickings Gal. Thanks for joining. And two. And one. Or am I just trying to overset that? No, that's pin one. Get up there. There we go. And three. Anybody that's new, welcome. <clears throat> this is the 30 lock out of the few. And just BSing, we go, we gutted one. We got one here to the side that we're trying to comb. It fits in the core fine, but having trouble getting the pins up. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. And yeah, all these will be, they are for sale. Uh, trying to get rid of them. Doing a deal for people in the Locksport community. Message me. I'll sell them cheaper than what I'm going to put them up for on eBay. And I'll give you a deal for four or more. So obviously, I, I need to get, get rid of some of these. Good kind of rotation there. So we got a spool. Which pig? There we go. And three. And one. Oh wow. Okay, that happened quick. Oh, wow, look at that. That's a decent bidding. So you can see even with decent biddings on these, like because of the the standard pens in them, it like, sometimes can go quick. Hello, everyone. People that have joined. Still picking through these. If you guys would like to see anything else, let me know, too. I'm going to have to stick with these. This is just a, uh, you know, a, a marathon visual. It's definitely got some here that I've been working on. All right, Bryce, no problem. Um, you can either scroll up in the comments section or go to my profile, and you'll see my social media. And feel free to message me on one of those. And I'll definitely get you hooked up. And anybody that's, um, uh, unfortunately, I do have to be uh, honest with the two, is I, I won't ship out of country unless uh, you pay for the shipping, just because shipping is nuts right now. So I'm in the States. I'm in uh, the United States right now. Uh, Canada could probably work with a little bit, but overseas is it's expensive. But uh, yeah, if you're interested, message me on one of my uh, social media profiles. And if anybody would like to, heck, there we go. Yeah, if anybody would like to, if you uh, want one of them that you buy to be pinned up for as a challenge lock, I'll do that for you. Heck, that'll add some fun to it. And Bryce, I don't know if you saw um, my gutting picture of these on Twitter or anything, but these have three spools and two standard. I overset something. I feel like I did. I'm not getting too much feedback on anything. Oh, wait, there we go. I'm back. There 
go. Five. There we go. So and we're moving through these nicely now. Oh, cool. Pennsylvania. Perfect. Yeah, just message me on one of my um, <clears throat> social media profiles and get it worked out. I have my uh, the envelopes to ship them in coming in really soon. So within the next two weeks, I'll be ready to ship them all out to everybody. So for those that have already messaged me on Twitter and Reddit and Facebook, um, it'll be very soon. And I'm trying to do them all at once as well to as much as possible. That way I can limit my trips to the post office and be responsible in that sense too. You know, I'm messing up a little bit. And I say that because it's a Saturday. I'm doing a lock picking marathon and I don't have a beer in front of me. I feel like I'm kind of failing in a sense. I mean, what goes better? Oh, yeah. What goes better than a nice lock pop and lock spores than a beer? Ooh, if anybody hasn't tried Larceny, I, uh, the dubbed Lock Pickers Whiskey, give it a shot. Discovered that at Lockfest a couple years ago, and let me tell you, that's some good whiskey. You can't mistake the bottle. It has a, a big-ass keyhole on the front of it. Heck, let me be right back. I'm going to go grab a beer, and I'll show you the whiskey real quick, since it's lock picking related. Oh, that's refreshing. Yeah. So I discovered this at Lackfest. Um, I forget uh, what her name was that always brings it, but she always brings it, and this stuff is amazing. It's got a key on it, a keyhole, and just in general, it tastes good. So join the club. <laughs> oh, Brian, you're ahead of me. See, there's kind of like a, a lot of lock pickers that, you know, drink as well. There's a thing that if we're about one or two beers in, that's like that perfect, uh, that perfect relaxation spot, you know, you catch just enough alcohol in you where you're relaxed, where you're picking well, but you got to kind of stay in that range where you're, you know, not getting too heavy handed or too careless with your lock picking. It's to some alcohol is an aid. <laughs> and to me, it can definitely aid to some extent. There's pin five, four, two, let's get two, one kind of rotation. We're on the pin properly. Can't quite anchor up one the same. There we go. Just don't have that key way to anchor on. Where is it? Pin three. There we go. Another open. So our pile of pick locks over here is getting into the stacks of five. And we have all of these left. <laughs> I don't know with our team right now. I might have to bite the bullet and pick.
pick through all these. And just because it's on video now and I'm making good progress. Pin one. Pin three. Pin four. Pin two. Pin five. So you can see just right there alone, it seemed like I was going really quick. Sure, it was, but the feedback in these, the, the binding pin is, it's obvious. It feels great. These are perfect to practice spools on, in my opinion, because you know which one's binding, and there's really not a whole lot of question about it where you're going to screw up and pick the wrong thing and overset something. I just, uh, everybody who was with us earlier, uh, saw earlier when I gutted uh, one of these, it is easy to overpick though too. And I did today so much so that I picked the driver pin into the Bible. And when I gutted it, I completely, it completely looked like there was no third pin. But when I uh, empty dumped the driver pins that uh, are dump, dumped, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the driver pins, the key pin fell out with it. So I may have misspoke, yeah. It's easy to push the key pins up in the Bible. So maybe pin one again. Oh, oh, pin five. There we go. That was obvious. Pin two. This connotation. There we go. Another rope. Awesome. So our pile over here is getting smaller. So I'm going to move these over. Hello, everyone that just joined. With these. It's moderate tension. You can do heavy too to make it, you know, even more obvious. You don't have to let a lot of tension off to get those spools either to pick them. I've been pretty successful without having to change too much of my tension. But every once in a while, just a little bit, like right there, right there. There we go. So that was two spools and two and three. And it's pen, yep, pen three. So, yeah, so with these, it's, it's so obvious that even just going into it, here's my technique for them. When going into it, I put my pen completely sideways. That way it's going underneath the key pins. That way it's sliding and barely touching the very bottom of them. And I just slide it back. And when it stops, you feel that binding pin right then and there. And that's your pen. So there we go, pen two. Push it back. Next is pen three. There, push it back. There's pin five. Yeah. So now I try to take it out. It's stuck on pin one. And that's a spool. So I have to. There we go. Oh, it looks like we hit the other pin just doing it. Thanks, Brian. Maybe killing a little bit more if I was already two beers in like you. <laughs> These things, see on my fingers, I already got grease on me. They're nice and greased up, so lubed good. And these were actually all, um, before I picked them the first time, these were all in package still. So I bought, it was, I don't know how to describe it, a big ass box. <laughs> Just full of these locks in their packages. Like, looks like they came straight off the shelf. And I cut every single one of them out. Unfortunately, I should have saved a couple uh, in their package because I've had a few lock pickers open, reach out to me and ask for one in the package. That way they could do an open uh, and gut, you know, from the package right there on camera. And I screwed up and didn't save any.
So now we're looking at all of our locks. So there's no more over here. We got this row right here, and then all of them picked right there. So getting pretty good, making some progress. And any new people joining, I'm sorry if I get repetitive with this, any new people joining, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. I'm just here having fun. <clears throat> Aaron's already made great suggestions for um, trying to comb it and see if it's shimmable, asking if there's ball bearings in it. And the answer to those questions is yes, there are ball bearings in it. And it does look like it could be shimmable. And it, yes, does look like the comb pick could do it as well. Yeah, Brian, I actually am selling some picks. Um, if you follow me on one of my social media platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, I will, um, I'm making a bunch of picks right now. And uh, or I would say pick handles. I would say I don't make the metal part of the pick yet. Um, I usually buy a sparrows or something and I make the handles for them. But I am making a just a shit ton right now, and I will be selling some. So keep an eye out. I'm trying to get them done as soon as possible. That way I can have them up at the same time as these locks. And then I also have a whole other box of locks here that I plan on selling. So I got... See, I found myself one of these nice, good Sergeant Greenleaf ones. So this is my second one of these. I bought this, uh, found it another local person that uh, was just trying to get rid of it, sold it for cheap, uh, cheap. So I got a second one of these. And then I have Pro Series. I have these, which are kind of unique. They're Master Number 21s, and they're actually interchangeable cores. So I picked all these, and I made keys for them. Uh, so these are really cool. And then also got some uh, Brady Lockout Tagout Locks. Uh, I just did a video on this one. If anybody is interested in it, keep a lookout. Uh, I'll, you'll see when I get my stuff on eBay. These things are one of the worst things in the world to gut. Backlock Prez, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, actually, here is a Packlock. <laughs> so yeah, so... These are the only pack locks I'm selling, though, pack lock res. And it's because I have multiples of these. The rest of them that you've seen on my videos, I am not selling those. I refuse to because those are my favorite locks. <laughs> I was just tell telling um, everybody earlier about when I was practicing with my tension uh, about the pack lock, actually. So I've learned that the pack lock in general, I have to really be careful with my tension on these, whereas the American 1100s, these other American clones... I can use heavier tension, but with these, I have to watch with my tension, and I have to really map out in my head where these pins are, and that's really hard to keep track of, and pack lock makes me do it. So while you're here, definitely, I love pack lock. These aren't for sale. <laughs> Not from me, anyway. I tell everybody to go to you. But yeah, so these are these will be my uh, up on eBay soon, too. So if you guys are looking for anything in there, uh, keep an eye out. Or message me privately on one of my social media uh, platforms. Yeah, pack like, <laughs> pack like pros, your locks are a pain in the ass. And I hope you saw my uh, recent video of picking the 600A at Blanca Lake because that was one of the most beautiful lakes that I've hiked to yet. And being able to pick that big badass lock at that lake was truly something for me. You want to trade for the SMG, huh? Oh, man. Okay. So you have me on Twitter. You can message me. I'm up, I'm up to talk. Yep, definitely. Because I'm trying to get rid of it. And it's, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just a beast. All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you then. But yeah, everybody, uh, if you haven't got pack locks yet, do it. Because to me, that is the step up in security pins and learning them from the American 1100. So you the American 1100s, like, oh, that's your step into security pins, right? The pack locks are, okay, now you have six pins and even more security pins. Uh, good luck. When you, that's like, 
another big step up to me because five pins is one thing, but then six pins with the, the tension and how much you really have to map out with the pack locks, those really give you, when you can do those, it, it's like, okay, now these normal padlocks that you see everywhere are doable. They are a lot more realistic to do. And just the feeling of getting one of those, oh man. And also this one, this is a pack lock I haven't picked yet, even in my spare time, even off camera. It's their new 98 Pro, their, uh, their lotto tad, lockout tag up padlock. And shit, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins and full of security pins. So yeah, the Pro, this thing is a beast, Prez. Holy, sh holy shit. <laughs> this thing is a beast. And the, and the bidding you guys gave me too. Look at that. All lows followed by nothing but highs at the end. It's going to be a while before I get this sucker open, and that's just gorgeous. I'm, Man, that's just gorgeous. I'm excited about it. And the crisp, clean, the pop of pack locks are so much cleaner and satisfying. Just, man. So, yeah, pack locks, if you haven't given them a shot, you guys got to. Especially if you've uh, conquered your 1100s. And then Packlock is coming out with a lot more cool stuff too. So not trying to do a lot of, you know, really promote, but I'm excited for the stuff that's coming out. They are active in our community. They pay attention. As you can see, there's the press right there in our chat. They are a great company and they're American made. So, I mean, the quality of them has been nothing short of amazing. Yeah. You guys are always working in new stuff. I, uh, even applied for your, um, new, what was it? Your, uh, the um the trailer hitches that you guys are doing like you guys just constantly are churning out new stuff go for it you guys are just kicking ass and taking the lock world over i really hope to see them more in stores yeah yeah i tried signing up for that and i saw the ones that went out to the people that, that got selected just holy crap those look open amazing and they look beefy holy hell Those will be interesting when they come out. You know I'll have to get one of each of those, too. I mean, it's just kind of the way it is. You can't just get one of the models. And Packlock's one of those up there now. So you get all your Americans. You get all your Master Locks. Master Locks are eh, you know. And then you got to get all your pack locks. I love... That's one of my things as a collector. I like having one of every model. It's just a must. see what do we have here let's pick this one and see how many we're on let's see back in the back there's pin five all right there's an open so we have over here one two three four one two three four five six seven seven times three is 21 six times four is 24 so we have 45 laps picked <laughs> hmm maybe we'll definitely have to talk that smg is man that thing's gorgeous and working on uh medicos right now i really hope that's uh something i can pick soon how about a uh a pack lock smg just a i mean how you you already got that tl80 that's beefy as hell that's pretty close to it ain't it i mean just one solid piece of metal and I've seen your, uh, your manufacturing, too. It's, yeah, you guys, just beefy. That will be amazing. Uh, son, if you ever have a pack like SNG, I won't look for it brand new. Or I mean, not, I won't look for it used like these SNGs. I'll buy that thing brand new because holy hell, that would be gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, Aaron, that's exactly how I felt. I don't, pack locks for me, um, there was a time when I first got them, uh, I was retweeted by Lockporn that day. Uh, I picked all four of the models I had, the 9800A, 200A, and 600A, and that was in one night. And that was that one time. And after that, it took me months, I mean, literally months, to pick them again. And I was so pissed off. And 
I was looking like, oh my God, I lost my tension. I just can't get these again. And then I finally, I practiced on them every freaking night. And then finally they started clicking for me. It's like, holy hell. And that was the moment of realization. Like these things are something, you know, to reckon with. Oh yeah. I saw that about the disc detainer lock. That's exciting. That's really cool. Much less for the military. That's exciting as hell. Because I've, I have all my, uh, the disc detainer tools. I got the one, uh, the, you know, the disc, disc detainer lock picking lawyer in Bosnia and Bill made, but I haven't dove into it too deep. And I feel like after my sidebars now in these high security locks, I'm going to get kind of bored and disc detainers just is where it's at. And that's where it's next. Even in general, looking around and watching, we're seeing more, even in the, the States, we're seeing more disc detainer locks show up, which is awesome because I mean, you know, these, can be learned to pick and kind of easier. And when people see a disc detainer lock, there's like, what the hell is that? And just requires a whole nother set of learning and tools, you know, and you can't make the disc detainer pick tools that easy. Another open. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. The disc detainer tool uh, locks will be cool. Will that be your uh, pack locks first disc detainer lock? Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. It's got to make your hair stand up a little bit. Just constantly moving forward. There we go. Another open. Uh, let's start a pile in the front of these ones. It's getting a little tall. I want to knock them all over and just be a mess. So we got eight. So that's, that's seven tall by seven. So 49 picked. Heck yeah. I'm just going to keep streaming until I pick these all. Why not? Flying through them now. Awesome. Yeah, I can only imagine that that manufacturing will be amazing because everything you guys produced so far has been great. Beer break. Well, it just means I already know I need to save up, add the the new pack lock disc lock to my list, and in general save up for that because all the other stuff I have on my list, I pretty much have everything in the states, and everything I'm trying to get the rest of the ways uh, across the seas out of country. I'm just trying to find a good contact in Europe, and I found one in Australia finally. So it's good to look forward to a new American uh, lock to get a hold of. American made lock that is, but yeah, we're running out of a uh, good locks over to get a, you know, to pick. Heck, in general, that's actually now realizing that we don't have America doesn't have a whole lot of great locks. We can just go out and pick them without moving, you know, getting something in your opinion to move up in security. It's good to see you're doing that. <laughs> Pack Prez, thanks for coming, man. It's it's been great, and absolutely, uh, look forward to your next new locks. And you definitely uh, know I'll be buying them. And I'll talk to you in my uh, PMs on Twitter. Have a good one. So everybody that's just joined, we have 40, 50 locks picked and still moving forward. We see that. We did discover that these the comb picks could be used on these. I just haven't got it to work yet. They fit nicely in the in the core anyway. Just haven't got it to work. And we have determined that this is most likely shimmable as well. It does have ball bearings. So, oh, cool. Actually, I can move some of these locks out of the way and try to shim it here soon because I have space to move locks now. Here we go. There's another one. Let's do that real quick. Let's move these over here. That way I can get my shims out. One more row out of the way. 
show. Oh, that's not the one. Oh, they're further up. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to have to move so many. Here we go. Okay. One of these. Keeping the keys in all these. That way I don't lose them and mix them up. So I'm not necessarily looking at the keys because you see when I'm holding them, I'm keeping the keys covered up. But okay, so we got this one closed. Make sure it's all the way closed. And we got different sizes of shims in here. So you can see that I bought, I got normal kinds of shims, and then also I keep uh, some cut up. Oops, nice, some them locks over. Some aluminum uh, can foil in there as well, just in case. Let's fix this tower of locks before they all topple. There we go. Watch my elbow there. Okay, let's see which one of these might fit. Smaller one. Let's see, we have our core over here too. Okay. I'll cheat a little bit. Show me. Hmm. So I don't think the the hole in the keyways. I don't think the tolerances are sloppy enough to really get one in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the tolerances are sloppy enough to get a shim in. This looks like it might be pretty tight. This one looks a little thinner. Let's see if this one works. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, Aaron. Yeah. Maybe that's... <laughs> Maybe that's why I've had no luck. <laughs> my just uh, my uh, my uh, ignorance in doing so. That's funny. Cause yeah, most of them I've in the past when I've tried shimming it just for fun and tied ball bearings. <laughs> Maybe it's just my absent mindedness. But yeah, I, these tolerances, even if you could shim, I don't think you can. Uh, um, even if it was shimmable, I don't think you'd get a shim down in these. Let's try our try this one again. Our comb pick. <laughs> That's true. I like to make everything harder. <laughs> Always finding out the hard way, especially in lock sport. Oh no! Look, everything flew everywhere. Well, guess I learned a lesson. Now get this comb pick in here. This is a lock where it should work too. Bidding is made for it. Hmm. If anybody has tips on using comb picks, I'd welcome them as well. I am definitely brand new with them. I've only tried them once in the past on uh, American locks. I'll set that to the side again, though. And thanks, everybody, again for joining. Just sitting here picking locks, BSing. I mean, it's a Saturday. Not going out doing anything. So I'm, I figured I'd sit here and both BS with the community. Because there's really not anyone else in my life that enjoys locks as much as everybody else does in this in this chat in this channel. I know my girlfriend in particular. I uh, tell her about a cool lock or something cool I saw or just got, and she just kind of stare at me like, "All right." <laughs> There's another open. So we're up to some 52 locks picked. Let's 
So we're almost halfway through in two hours. So I bet you can beat the last time. So last time it took me about five hours. On here, Not five, four, three, two, one, one, no. Which one are you? May have overset one. These are easy enough to where yeah, if I ever reset like that, I'm just gonna reset it and start over. It's pin four. Two again. Oh, there we go. Five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've dropped a few already and went back through it. That's fine. Set. Oh, there we go. That one was a little pain in the ass. Let's get the bidding on it. Yeah. So this fourth pin being a pain. Thanks, Bryce. Next, awesome, our pile is getting smaller. Thanks, Brian. Mm, thanks, everybody, again for stopping in. Sorry. And two. That's a spool. And three. It's also a spool. And open. I don't even know if I touched pin four and five. I wonder if that's from um, these being master keyed and kind of already in the uh, the master pins having it lined up with the shear line already. Two. Spin 
and four and five and one. And one has a spool and three and open. So we're on two hours. Let's count them in a second. I think we're still doing pretty good, yeah. 49 plus seven, so we got 56 picked. And this is just clicking away. There we go, that's open. It's getting a little slippery. Okay. Counting them down, Brian. I'm getting there, man. Looks like about halfway through. And the speed's picking up now. Finally relaxed with the live stream, and I've got that beer in me now, so that's definitely helping. And five, and two, three, one, Three is a spool. It's next. Five. And one. And four. So if I'm hitting these multiple times, I can guarantee it's because the Master King inside of them. And I lost a feel for the pins. So I can guarantee I probably overset something. Just gonna reset it and do it again. So this has great feedback. There's no point in wasting time. There's one, two, I wonder if anybody else has the same problem. Does the angle of your hand affect how you're picking? I know a lot of people like it straight on, but I find that if I 
keep my hand at a natural angle when I'm picking. It helps me from screwing up in there too much because I'm trying to force it too much. So I typically, this is to the side of me. I can't really look down the keyway, but it helps me feel and visualize everything better without pushing too hard and accidentally knocking something. More. Where's this one at? One of these are being a pain. There it is. Pin five. Hmm. So it's been a pain in the ass. Or maybe I'm just trying to rush it too much. There we go, four. Yeah, that one was up there. Ah, oh, that's why. So you can see like the last two pins were really high. That's why it was being a pain in the ass. Excuse me, just for a second. So next, Heck, just to have them ready, let's go ahead and reset some of these so I don't have to do it each time. Don't lose your keys. I don't want to deal with that later. I already got like 10 or 15 of those with keys mixed up. That's going to have to figure that out later. Yeah, Mad Bob's picks are amazing. They definitely help out quite a bit. And especially, it's another thing too that I've noticed, um, make up a really good point with even just the tension tool. So overall comfort is kind of important when you're picking. And uh, the reason being is because you don't want to put any too much extra tension on anything or any extra force on anything. So the more relaxed your hands are uh, while in position, the better at picking you're gonna be. And that's one thing Mad Bob's tools did and I'll show it to everybody that doesn't know. These are them right here. These are the curved tension wrenches that they have. And so you stick them in there, so not this one. So yeah, because I use the short side, because there's there's six of them. These, they have different curves on them for the different sides. So you stick them in there, so they just naturally fit the curve of your hand and your finger when you're doing it. These are amazing, and <clears throat> I would definitely Anybody that hasn't done that, experiment with it. I've noticed even lockpicking lawyer um, uh, will take his normal pry bars and bend them to the right degree that he wants them at. And I can't blame him because any sort of discomfort while picking in your hands can really affect your picking. And especially when you get to the higher security locks. Yeah, Brian, I'm about the same. Yeah, I can't. I can't hold it up straight up to down. It's natural hand position. So this is facing to uh, on screen. This is facing to my right. This is uh, the left on screen, but this is facing to my right. And it's almost completely sideways to me. I can barely see the, uh, the keyway as I'm doing it. Although sometimes too, if I'm picking a harder keyway, I will hold it straight up and down like this. Let's see if I can get it on camera for y'all. I'll hold it straight up and down like this. The reason being, let's see if I can get the angle is when I'm doing that, I can't get the angle quite right. I can look at my pin and the way it goes into the keyway. So you can see the keyway there. I can get my pick. I can make sure it's going straight up and down in the keyway. That way I'm not too far off to the side or my pick's not angled. And so I'll do that on uh, 
uh, different keyways too, just to make sure my pick is going straight up and down. And specifically for, actually a great example for keyways like this one, if I can, Come on now, focus. There we go. I can't see it too well. Well, there you can see it a little bit. You can see how jagged it is. There we go. So you see how jagged it is. So sometimes I like having that in a direct angle with my line sight. That way I can make sure my pick is going straight up and down like that in the in the uh, keyway. That way I know I'm not hitting the sides for sure. Otherwise, at that angle. It's so easy for me to hit one of these little grooves in the sides and think I'm hitting the top of the keyway when I'm actually not. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it's until someone picks up another time to um, another person picks up, you know, the concept. I don't I don't think we'll ever see him again, unfortunately. Yeah, Mad Bobs, it's. It's kind of like that in lock sport in general, where if you see something that you really like in a tool, a tool specifically, you kind of have to get it when you see it because, um, I mean, lock sport isn't huge, right? Uh, people have to make money. They need to make a living. And so it might not be around that long. So, yeah, when you see like different picks and stuff, jump on them, get them while you can if you're really wanting them. I mean, don't break yourself over it. But that is kind of the, uh, the way of lock sport. And sometimes even buying locks, it's that way too. You see something on eBay or whatever that's you know hard to come by. It's like, oh crap, that's a little bit pricey, but it's hard to come by. And I think I should get that right now. Yeah, we're open. Oh good, these are already set. Glad I went through and did all that. One and three, five, a little bitty click. <laughs> Trying to enable, yes. <laughs> Try not to enable it too much. You gotta set rules. So that's one thing, yeah. You gotta set rules on yourself too. Like you've got a budget, times are definitely hard, right? <laughs> you gotta set rules on yourself. Because another open. There's a lot of locks I have wrote down that I really want, but the rule I've set for myself is which I broke it at first up here in these drawers up here. I have um some good ass alloys that like uh, the V10s the, with their sidebars. I'm I'm going to learn how to pick those soon, but I'm not going to be able to pick them. I got Asthma Desmos. I got a buy lock up there. So I broke my rule once, but my rule is in general, if it's in my immediate picking future, if I know that's something I can strive to pick in the next year within my skill set, it's worth buying because that's the most important thing to me is uh, getting my skill set better and having a lock that I could possibly pick. Otherwise, you're like, oh, you know, I have this really badass lock. I got this, you know, Asa XYZ. And awesome, now what? As I spent this amount of money on this, and I will, may not be able to pick this for years, you know. And they'll be around. Uh, a lot of locks will be around, you know. People will be selling them. But I definitely like to keep it within my um, my abilities now. <laughs> it's a hard rule. It's, it's a hard rule to follow, especially on eBay. Do you see something like, oh, hell. <laughs> It's even harder to follow. Uh, yeah, it's even harder to follow when you um, start looking locally for locks because you know local listings, there's very, it's a limited amount of people looking at it, right? So you know there's only so many people in your local area that may pay, pay attention to locks for, or then the locks. So it's like, I have to get this for so, before someone else does. And the local deals are usually the best deals. And that's how I got all of these. So those are even more hard to pass up. Although some of them too, depending on where it's at, you can, you know, if it's an auction style type thing like offer up where you can uh, offer a lower price, you can sometimes play with them a little bit with the price to get it down a little bit. But you again, don't want to wait too long either. <laughs> it's five, three, four, 
three. Come on, number three. That's a spool. There we go. And so yeah, if you want like new locks, so when I first started, I got all the American series locks. And um, then after that, I actually, I did a little backwards from what I said earlier. I got the Master Pro series locks next. I found those to be a lot of fun just because the security pins in them and uh, the security pins are just a little bit easier than um, American because sometimes they're more lightly serrated. The other thing I liked about practice on the, practicing on the American, uh, not the American, but the Master Pro series was that um, they have tension to their cores. So they're not as dead core as the American locks. So that works out with my heavy handed tensioning. So it actually made it easier for me to pick and so where I could feel things better and you know, learn it better. Whereas American going from, uh, you know, being a heavy handed tensioner type guy in general to an American lock is, uh, can be a daunting task. So that's one reason why I, uh, tell everybody if you're new to security pins, try the pro series first, because it's easy to put too much tension on when you're learning and those work with you more than they work against you. And the stack is building up. It's five, four, one. One's a spool. Oh, no, I screwed that up. It dropped and it's springy now, so let's see what happens there. Four again. Three. One is fine. I'm gonna click back there. Click out of three, two, there we go. Now one. And two. Two is a spool and open. Oh, second time this happened, but the spring tension in these doesn't make the keyway go back like some other locks do. So luckily it stayed picked for me. Luckily. And one, two, four, three, two again. One, no, five. Here we go, five. Two. One, two, there we go. Try to set it is. And there's four. There we go. Holy cow. I'm gonna have to move this pile of pick locks out of the way soon. So I don't knock them over. Three, two, click out of one, four. Four. Make sure I'm at. Okay. Make sure. Making sure that was the spool and I wasn't pushing on the core, causing that kind of rotation. That's one thing I can do on occasion uh, while pushing too hard or getting too much into it without relaxing and focusing. Is I'll start thinking it's kind of rotation, but it's not because my pick will be pushing on the core causing it because it's not properly placed. So sometimes when you have that idea, you have to slow down, let tension off, 
make sure your pick is properly under the pin and then see if you feel it. There we go. Sets for these. Wow, our pile is running out. And we're on two hours and 20 minutes. And we have 49 plus 52, 55, 58, 61, 64, 66 picks. So making better time than the, uh, the first round of picking through all these. Wow, did you see that? <laughs> Hardly had to touch some of them. And I don't even think uh, I picked some of those pins. I think some of them just went into place because my uh, the shaft of my pick knocked them in place. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I think I'm going to pick the rest of these right here. Oops. And then I'm going to move some of these picked locks. Is this one three? I don't know if I already picked this one or not, or if that was up there with the picked ones waiting to be picked. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one again just in case. Because completeness... Five, kind of rotation of four, there we go. One's fine, two, three, right there, just knock that into place. Five, four, three. There we go. And I'm gonna set that one up here. See, so yeah, I need to move these pick locks out of the way so I don't knock them down and I can get to the other ones. Too many locks on the desk. Pin one. Pin four, three, One again, two, five. There we go. Okay, yeah, that was one. You're sticking over. Oh, here we are. Those were over there. This one hasn't been picked. This one hasn't been picked either. Well, I set one over there and I screwed up and probably reset it and picked it again, but whatever. One extra is not going to kill you. I don't want to assume because I'm not paying a whole lot of attention. What's on the ground, I'm just grabbing and picking. So if I have to do one again, that's fine. So there we go. It's three, two, and one. A spool on three and a spool on one. And four, there we go. And two, there we go. Open. I'm setting those off into a different spot now because I need room on my desk. Oh wow, yeah, that's a good, uh, good question. I don't know. That would also. Hmm, that would depend on locks then too, so you'd have to categorize it, right? Because if you just put general locks, anybody could pick any lock and do so many under an hour, right? Yeah, so would it be, um, would it be like, uh, will we do like our American locks, since that's kind of like our uh, a turning point in uh, lock hood? What lock would we consider? Because we can't just do normal 
everyday pin tumblers with uh, standard pins. And we could, but I think that would just make it easier and people just go in and, I mean, I've done it with a huge lot of master locks I had, just go through, rake them all open, you know? So they would need to be security pins to make sure that they're single pin picking them. We should make that category. I can hold it for a day and then lock picking lawyer and Bosnia Bill can come by and take it the next day. <laughs> Um, you know, I actually haven't tried raking these. Uh, let me SPP this one real quick, and I'll try raking them. Yeah, with three spools, I bet you it's uh, realistic. Because it's only three spools, and so it's not full of security pins. And also, oh, yeah, because these are uh, master pinned as well. So, yeah, I don't see why not. Here feels like pin three. Yep, there we go. And pin five. Get up under there. There we go. Yeah, let's try raking one real quick. And I'll count that as a pick when I rake it just because. Oh, where's my race? Just because and only because I accidentally reset one of those earlier. And picked it again. Let's see this typical triple peak. Yep, Brian, let us know, please. <laughs> Aaron, I do too, and it depends on what lock I have. Uh, for instance, some of the locks I uh, buy from people off eBay and whatnot, um, I might rake those open just so I can. Uh, get a key in there and repin the core. So it really depends because I, I have some, for instance, uh, some cheap locks right now. Not cheap locks, but some older locks where that fits the category. Yeah, an open is an open. You're right. And um, I didn't start practicing my raking. Give me one second. I'm going to get my law, law lock tools. Oh, there they are. I'm actually getting ready to make handles for my law lock tool rakes. Get those out. Oops, dropped a few. A few things here. Get that out of the way, so lose those. It wasn't until um, the last lock fest where we met that I picked up raking as a skill in general. And the reason being is because of that competition we had. Because up until then, I only did SPPs because, you know, it's kind of like the similar way I haven't done a lot of shimming or uh, combing methods of bypass. I just like SPPing. And going there, we went to the, uh, the, the lock picking competition and raking was allowed. And I was like, oh, hell, like I didn't even bring any of my uh, rakes. And um, uh, I forget one of the guy's names. Uh, man, I can't believe I forget his name, but he's one of the uh, tool guys to help run it. And um, oh, man, what's his name? Yeah, Christina Palmer's uh, awesome. She's great help. She's the one, yeah, she's the one that uh, always brings the larceny. <laughs> but yeah, it was that competition where um, I forgot what his name was. Uh, uh, he sent me, or he let me borrow his rakes for the competition because I didn't even bring any. I just, um, it wasn't Devin or Jack. Uh, um, no hair on top, glasses, uh, kind of a beard. Man, what's his name? I can't believe I'm blanking. But, yeah, he let me borrow his rake and let me use it for the uh, competition, which it helped. It actually got an open. And um, my opinion, I believe, if I would have practiced raking before that competition, I knew it was a thing, or, you know, I knew it was a thing, I would have been in that last round with a uh, lockpicking lawyer. So, yeah, after that, I went home and practiced because I was like, okay, well, damn it, like... <laughs> That's another thing with. 
Yeah, she's awesome. She's a she's very active. She's great help. I wonder if my tension tool is binding on it. Let's try a different tool, different thickness. That way it doesn't go under the keyway there. There we go. <laughs> Lock picking Belfast, welcome. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Aaron, I told someone, oh, it was my girlfriend. Uh, I told her about the uh, lock picking game that you were going to do and how excited I was about that because it was going to involve um, uh, doing handcuffs and I got my practice in for that. Hey, Merlin, welcome. I'm SPPing everything. I'm just... Uh, Aaron asked if I could, uh, if we could, if these were rakeables. So I'm trying that right now. <laughs> That's all right, Belfast. Oh, there we go. So we got an open raking. So my, I had better chances with the, uh, the five peaked one. I like these a lot more. So typically you got your, these two profiles, right? I, I like the, uh, the five a lot more, but I still love these. So there we go. Yeah, raking is definitely doable on these locks. And I will count this one as an open just because I have reset and re-SPP -re to past one. Yeah, good suggestion. That was definitely worth trying because anything with security pins in that, yeah, it's definitely a curiosity of whether or not you can rake it open or not. Because, I mean, that's what security pins are supposed to be for, and that's what the Lock advertisements, advertisers start advertising them for, right? On the package. Oh, these are uh, raking and pick resistant. Yeah, sure. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm about due for one again. I had one, and I think I'm about due for another. Just lock picking and beer kind of just goes together. And I need that perfect amount. Because one's not enough. I need about two or three and try to hold it there. Five, four, three, two, two, three, another click out three, spool. Is that five is a spool? Here we are, right there. Oh, lost it. There we go. Open. <laughs> Merlin, you're absolutely right. And that's why I, I typically stick to, when I go to uh, Lockfest, I stick to Christina's. Uh, her tradition of larceny. That's just, it's the way to go. And just because everybody else at Lockfish is just, they're whiskey people, including Deviant. So, yeah. Aaron, no, you haven't. I would be really interested in seeing the board game with you. That would be so much fun. I I was so excited about that board game in Lockfest this year. It sucks that we couldn't go. Oh, hell yeah. You're welcome to share it. Yeah, please do. If you want to share it here, you're welcome to as well. Yeah, or PM me, whatever makes you comfortable. That I, I was really excited about your game. <laughs> I haven't picked any handcuffs off myself for a while, so when it gets closer to that time again, oh, that sucks. Okay. Damn, of course they won't. When it gets close to that time again where uh, we're all going to meet up and get the chance to play some games again, I am looking forward to that. Yeah, DM me. I'm interested. Pulling some more of these locks out of the way here real quick. Just because they're all kind of hiding behind the now picked ones. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, keep it a secret. That way nobody steals your idea as well.
go. So those that are new, um, here are my new pick locks right here. There's some of them. And then over here, the locks we have left to pick are back here. We have about 20 back there and these right here. Otherwise, we have all these that have already been picked. So um, we're over halfway through. We're two and a half hours in, making better time than even the uh, first time going through this. So I'm hoping to get these all done and within four hours. And on that note, I'll be right back. I do need to grab a beer. A little bit of relaxation real quick. All right. Let's continue. Yeah, we don't have many left. We're going to definitely finish this all off today and stream. Let's get these all set and ready to pick. So I have all these still picked from before. It's just a, it's a task in itself to reset them. And anybody that's new, I'm keeping the keys on them. That way I don't lose the keys because honestly, I'm not going to go around later trying to stick uh, one key in 113 different locks until it works. <laughs> So these are all set. Yeah, man, this is a task in itself. And I get to go through and reset them all again afterwards. And <laughs> yeah yeah and you're exactly right a spotter is important so whenever i've picked um handcuffs behind my back um i haven't had any spotters here when i try anything more crazy i'm gonna have my girlfriend with me for sure but i always keep a key in my back pocket since I'm turned around anyway, you can see whether or not I'm going to use a key to open it, right, if I reach in my pocket. So I always keep a key in my back pocket when I'm doing it, and then also another key on the table in front of me or right next to me. That way there's another key there, too, just in case I get that one out of my pocket and I drop it and it goes behind something. Yeah, a lanyard's a great idea, too, yeah. But yeah, yeah, highly <laughs> be careful and make sure you have your stuff ready because... Uh, I don't know too many people that can step through their, um, put their arms underneath their legs to get it back on the other side of them, you know? And I've always, uh, yeah, even with the key, it's still quite hard to get out of it. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, you're right. The, the way the keyway is pointed is absolutely um, a big part of it too. Even when uh, picking it in those videos, like what helped me pick it in those videos is literally memorizing the diff different way the keyway faced for each model between the um open between the uh, what were they the um, smith and wesson 100s and the peerless because their keyways face differently so in a sense they were um different to pick and had to learn each one because also depending which way the keyway faces you have to go further a different direction to pick that lock that's just it can be a pain in the ass. But it's cool that you're trying the handcuffs thing too. I'd like to see more people doing that. It's a lot of fun. So there's one. Nice set there. There's three. So there's a spool here, right there on three. And open. Yeah, Merlin, yeah, pain in the wrist. Uh, the one video where you can really see how bad it can do on your wrist, like it can definitely mess you up. You don't want to do it too long, cut your circulation off that bad. Um, it's really hard to relax uh, while picking them behind your back, and that's the big key is relaxing. 
uh, your arms entirely except for your wrist that you're bending in the most strenuous way possible because you don't want to pull away with your arms at all, but you want to bend your wrist really hard. And at the end of my uh, the Smith & Wesson 100 video, you just see my my wrists are torn up from it. Like, it didn't, it did not feel good. But I also heard, like, um, I try to remember to uh, stretch my wrist, especially being a programmer. I got in the habit of that. And especially so because uh, Houdini used to stretch his uh, wrists as well. And so I'm not sure how flexible your wrist can be, really, but it's definitely necessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to make sure nobody thinks anybody's beating me at home or I escape from jail. <laughs> I joked with my friends like, yeah, if I ever get stuck in these cuffs at home by myself, it's going to be entertaining going over to my uh, neighbors knocking on the door with handcuffs on saying, hey, um, can you help me? Here's the key. Open this for me. Because they'd most likely call the cops and be like, yeah, buddy, I'm not helping you get out of those cuffs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, simple cuffs aren't that bad, especially once you see a uh, cutaway of them and how they work. It's not it's not that bad at all. The second, uh, the uh, the double locking mechanism makes it definitely more of a pain in the butt, but it tends, also depends on the, uh, the cuffs that you have and their tolerances. There we go. For instance, like the, uh, the Model 100s, uh, their tolerances are a little bit more sloppy than the Peerless, and they're heavier, and I found those easier. But the uh, the peerless cuffs, their keyway was it's so tight and their tolerance is so well. That was that's just a pain in the ass. That peerless is, was a tough one to get. Oh, I so I'm just flying through these. Oh man, I'm getting. I'm getting excited here. I see the end of these locks. Let's try to see if I can focus move a little bit faster on them. Two, one, four. Five. There we go. Awesome, yeah, I'll check that out for sure. Yeah, I was excited about that. That'll be cool to check out. Yeah, Brian, uh, I tried paper clips at first and didn't work so well, and then I stuck with bobby pins because they're flat. The thing with bobby pins, though, too, is you have to have, when you, you have to have the right angle on them when you bend the tip of it. You can easily overdo it, too. But bobby pins are my, uh, my go-to for picking them. I always uh, have a pack on me, so my girlfriend's uh, kind of happy about that in a sense. <laughs> and the thing with bobby pins too is you gotta clip the end off it, or not really clip the end off it, but you gotta scrape that plastic off the end of it that way it'll fit into as well. Just open. Oh yeah, I like bobby pins a lot more. Um, see here oh i don't have any i threw all of my bobby pins away that uh that i had bent up but, but bobby pins have been my favorite so far they seem pretty rigid everything i've had to i've tried to do with paper clips even just normal SPPing like locks with paper clips of so, um paper clips have been really easily for me and i'm not sure it's just because my heavy tension or not but i haven't had a whole lot of luck with paper clips in general like i can do it but i don't prefer I should try it again though. It's because it's been a while. Which one of these is it? It's not it. Oh, there we go. That was it. Yep, 
Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's the key, Brian. Is uh, that's pretty much the secret. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's the hard thing too, especially when you're trying to get that right length on the end of that bobby pin. So you're doing it behind your back too, so you really have to use your finger and get the feel and hope you put it just far enough in that keyhole and that you didn't, you know, create too much or too big of a tip on it because then it just it just doesn't work. Ooh, a safety pin might be a good one. Yeah, I haven't tried safety pins yet. Open. Oh, wow, I'm getting ready to have to pull the rest out from the back there. We are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Don't miss the keyhole. You just end up stabbing yourself the whole time. <laughs> I wonder what else would be good for picking uh, handcuffs like that. So you could do music wire, but that, I think, at a certain extent, when you get down to a certain thickness, that would be about the same as using a paper clip. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. I have to play with a, uh, a few different things in general. Maybe that's like a future video I could do is uh, picking handcuffs and the different types of little things you could try with it. it definitely make me expand uh, the stuff I have around me and what I've tried so far. It's one thing I love about making videos that makes you really think about everything before doing it because you're putting it on video. Go and two, open. We are down to less than 20, it looks like. Maybe. Maybe about 20. <laughs> Thanks, Jenna. It's... It is a long task, and trying to stay focused and not get my hands all tightened up while doing this is really a pain in the ass. Where is that? Pin three. There we go. Pin two. Where are you? Come here. Two. There we go. Another open. Oh, I don't want to lose the key to that real quick. Set it down just a little too excitedly. There we go. Now, get the rest of these out of the way here. Crap. Oh, there go some of them. That's all right. We'll get those in a second. Thanks, Jenna. And excuse me real quick, I'm gonna get these that I've dropped. There we go. Oh, knocking stuff over. There we go. One, two, four, and then all we have left are 
these in the very back here. So, how many do we have left here? Lost the key set, maybe that's it. Looks like we have 23 left. Twenty-four, twenty-five. We have about twenty-five left. Perfect. So what we got? Not even three hours and twenty-five left. Oh, we're making good time. Awesome. Oh, this is uh this is a um uh, a mouse mat like it's huge it's great I got it on Amazon this thing is great it's it feels good on my wrist and everything and I like it because it gives a different background than the typical uh, pinning mat you know and I figure because we deal with flock supporters and we're flock supporters throughout the entire world why not Yeah, of course. Another quick open. 24. Pin one. Pin three. Click on two, bring it back. Pin five. I click out of three. Click out of five. Nope, not a spool, is it? It is a spool. There we go. Pin five. Thanks a lot, Pecking Belfast. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, these are definitely a little redundant now. <laughs> See you around. That pin three. Pin one. There we go, pin five. That was a spool. Here we go. Open. Down to 23. So don't knock those locks over an accident. Okay, let's go ahead and do this to these real quick. If you're out, Merlin, cheers. If you're saying bye to Belfast, cool too. Just don't want to miss you. Okay. All right, cool. More fun to hang out with. <laughs> Not more fun, but more people that are fun. Go that. Almost done resetting the last ones. And we'll fly through those. Get this done and out of the way so we can have a smooth rest of the pick. Yeah, I love the lock picking community. They're so much fun. And like I was saying earlier, just even the meetups are the best is actually meeting them, meeting up, 
meeting all the great people that are involved, the information that is given. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. That's interesting, Brian. I, I will have to look into that and hell, maybe contact Guinness and see if there's something that we can get set up. That would be really cool. At least I could hold it for a little bit till uh, LPL or Bosnian Bill jumps in and wants to take it over. <laughs> Almost done. There we go. Last one. Okay. Now we are all set to pick through the rest of them. Let me get a drink here real quick. Yes, lock support is amazing. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, Bosnian Bill is, yeah. He's been doing it for so long. That could be a good point. Yeah, that would be awesome. And yeah, Locksport's the best community. Like, they're so full of information. Everybody's always willing to share and show how to do stuff and take stuff apart. When you go to meetups and stuff, everybody's open to, you know, um, letting you come by, sit at their table, pick their locks that they have. It's awesome. You just got to make sure you have your locks labeled because, you know, locks kind of start floating around and get intermingled and you might lose one that way. But otherwise, freaking locks for community is awesome. And just, you know, you can borrow a lock off people sometimes. If you're in that close of an area, some people let you borrow their locks just to get it in, pick it and move on. Five, there we go, four, where's our last one here? Pin one. One set. Oh, pin two is going to be our last one, maybe. Ah, oh, that's a good point, Aaron. Ah, uh, Sergeant Greenleaf, nice. Yeah, I was just showing off my big Sergeant Greenleaf earlier. Aaron, that's a good point. I actually looked at getting stickers of my logo. I might have to look at getting some smaller ones just for that reason. That is a great idea. And that way, you don't... That way, too, you don't have to really worry about um, someone having the same stickers as well. Where's this one at? I may have overset something. Nope, nope. There we go. Click a click out of two. Oh, wow. Two in the box. You, you have two Sergeant Greenleafs. Are they new in box? That's five. Three. There we go. Oh, that's so cool. Still. Yeah, that's awesome. How often do you see one that's not used? Like, I see them here and there, and they're expensive on eBay. That's really cool. Oh, that one just opened right up. Thanks for joining, Jenna. Have a good day at work. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I keep track of uh, 
different auctions around here in the Seattle area for that reason. I actually got a really cool uh, Yale advertisement board off a of locksmith when I was back home uh, recently. Uh, he was retiring and he had just a, sh a, not a shed even, a warehouse for his locksmithing stuff. And it was just loaded and it had old advertisements with those old brash Yale locks on them. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, that's cool. That's wild. There we go. Start on this final pile. Down to 20. Two, one. Holy crap. <laughs> That's a good amount of locks. Being someone, after buying this, like uh, this big lot here and a past big lot, 50 pounds is a good amount of locks. And I don't blame you, especially when it's uh, a locksmith going out. Like, you probably got some good stuff out of that. Oh, nice. Two, two, go and four. There we go. That one right. Oh, man. Yeah, of course, the Masters. You got to take what you can get. That's awesome. There we go. I think one of the best things in the world is uh, running across a good lot of padlocks that are for sale that you know a lot of people aren't looking at. It makes you feel pretty special. <laughs> Another open. We should have these done in not too long. So it looks like I'm going to beat the uh, five hour mark for sure. See if we can beat the three and a half. I have no doubt we could. Yeah, they're open. Oh. Nice. Are those are those these kinds? Because these are kind of the same ones I got for uh, that advertising board. Oops, sorry. Ah, very nice. Oh, that's a hell of a find. Those are so nice too, especially if they're in good condition. Oh man. You are a lucky person. <clears throat> Holy crap, brand new. Jeez. Oh, that... I can't imagine, like, the smile you must have had on your face finding that. I at least would have been like, holy hell, look what I found. And not trying to smell too much either, you know. <laughs> you don't want to let them know too, like, oh, God, like, super excited where they're trying to raise the price a little, you know. <laughs> but I don't know if they're a locksmith. They know, the, uh, they know the value of them. That is, yeah, that is the sale of a lifetime. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I'm grinning from ear to ear for you right now. That's awesome.
five. Oh wow, that's nuts. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, they're uh, the people that would inherit it and stuff. This is the guy uh, I got my Yale advertisement board. Kind of the same, same situation. There we go. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! You really did just. You walked into something amazing. Yeah, that, that sale, it sounds like that visit and that sale in general was memorable as hell. It's two, four, five. Down to 14, 15 lux because we got this one right here too that's got the comb pick in it. Might have to take the comb out of it and pick out of it just for completeness. You know how it is. No. Oh wow, that's nuts. That's a crazy deal. I can imagine though too. I bet you some of that price you mentioned like the younger generation didn't want anything to do with it. I bet you that's the reason why some of the price was there. Just having a hard time getting rid of it. That's still that's crazy. And not a lot of people want to put the uh time in the listing and all in line and even deal with that really. No. Yeah, that would be hard to place a value on everything. That sucks. It had to be that day. That's so cool. There's two. Three right there. Five was a spool. One. No. Wait. One. Yes, yes, one was yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no joke, literally a ton. I haven't got too much in the safe yet, though when I see them on like local listings, it's hard not to really consider it. Oh, there we go, spool set somewhere there. One, yes, there we go. Four. Four is a school. Where are you? Don't really want to reset you. Which pin is it? Yeah, hell, just reset it. Still making good time. Oh, weird. I didn't know that about saves. That only adds to the weight. Holy shit.
Yeah, so small saves I've been paying attention to, especially trying to get into learning to pick the SMG 6670. Okay. Back there. Yeah, I can I could see myself one day having like a room of safes. And I guess putting all my padlocks on top of them. <laughs> I would like to get a safe that I know I could crack, get one of those, you know, three three wheels uh SMGs on it and have one to actually crack one day. So that would be amazing. Or was that hard? That's why it was hard. Had the best bidding possible, pretty much. Yeah, I would really like the feeling of getting into a safe one day. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I have the dial and small panel here. I'll grab it real quick while we're on topic. Just because it'll only take a second. So, yeah, here's the one I got right here. I got this off of, uh, I forget what website it is. It's right here. Uh, I think it's an MBA USA. I got this uh, backing for it. And I also made, on the back of it, I made uh, this plexiglass. That way I could see through it as I'm doing it. Yeah. So this, I think, would be awesome to learn. And I have a couple more of these as well. So I want to learn how to pick this in my code and then set the other ones to random and uh, pick those. So uh, I mentioned earlier, like having multiple locks and that's why. So I don't have to pick this one, reset it to something and then, um, you know, pick it again. I just have one that's instantly ready right then and there. Set this off to the side. Yeah, I really like the back on that. I got that not too long after Lockfest after their, uh, uh, I forget who did the demo on save cracking, but after that I was like, okay, well, got to get one of those now. Four. Three. Two, there we go. One. Four. That's five, actually. Sorry. Here's school. Four. Three, two. One, no. Oh, there we go. Three, actually. I haven't. Um, I haven't heard the reviews on the sparrows one. Um, was it Brian's? Yeah. Oh, was it you, Aaron, that was talking about that earlier? with the uh, different wheels customizable where you can uh, progressively wheel it. Cause that sounds awesome. Um, this is the first time today I've heard about that. And after hearing that I might get one of those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounded awesome. The way you described that. I didn't know about that. And if I would have known, I would have probably invested a lot sooner. Yeah. That is an awesome feature. Oh, wow. What is this pinning? Oh, that's why that opened up by the second I put my pen pick in it. <laughs> Easy bidding there. We're down to the final nine. Ah, okay, yeah, Bryce. Yeah, after hearing about that, I think I'm gonna have to invest in one just because like that's made to learn on. That sounds awesome. And I still got my charts and stuff from Lockfest to plot them out on too. Did 
down to eight. Yeah, that is a site here. Give me one second and put that open. Yeah, let me see it here. I have it saved in my tab here. A new tab. See, I think it was MBUSA. Yeah, MBUSA.com. Let me make sure that was it. Oh, it was um, go to shop dot tps labs dot net that's what it is and yeah and you can see on the side they got an acrylic back for the 6700 so yeah here i'll put it I'm sure if i can yeah do the link like um Aaron said there we go yeah someone at lockfist told me about that one I believe, I don't know if you know, anybody knows anybody has a 3D printer, but I believe that um, they also have models for these for people to 3D print them as well. The Locksport community is going nuts in the 3D printer world, but I actually sold my 3D printer uh, not too long ago. Down to the final six. See my pups ready to go out. <laughs> Almost done. Jazzy wheat. So interesting fact, my dog actually talks to me. I, um, I have a, if you've heard about the talking dogs online, I have buttons that are laid out on the ground that I record my voice on and when she wants something she'll step on those and tell me what she wants so if you hear my voice like kind of quieter in the background and it sounds like I say something even though it's not um, that's her pushing the buttons telling me she wants something so she just told me she wants outside and she's gonna have to wait aren't you because I got five more left Oh, that's cool. I haven't heard about that one, Aaron. Where's that at? Also, thank you. Yeah, she's she's a smart pup. Um, if you guys want to... Yeah. Right, yeah, she's almost... She's She'll hold out. We got so many, so close. But if you guys want to see more like the talking dogs and where I learned to um, teach her is um, look up uh, Google hunger for words. And it's a speech, speech pathologist that works with people with disabilities that use, um, like certain autisms and stuff, they'll use interfaces to communicate because they have the uh, communication problems and they can do the same thing with buttons. And she actually taught her dog how to do that. So there's the Hunger for Words woman that taught her dog how to talk using buttons. And there's a local person in Seattle um, whose dog's named Bunny who also did that. And so there's, you can really teach your dog how to talk to you and the craziest thing about it that I've experienced so far with it is that because she has a voice you have to actually you have to acknowledge them now you can't just you know you have to acknowledge them like because they're telling you this is what I want it's clear as day this is what I want you can't just ignore them you can't you know you know typical dog it you know it's like okay you have to wait or okay you know whatever but you have to actually acknowledge them because they're telling you and Whenever she does it, like she'll push on the button, 
and she'll turn and just stare at me because she knows like that's what she wants. Oh, cool. I haven't heard about that. That's really cool. But yeah, it's really freaking cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, very much the same way as sign language. It's just um, here at the end of my stream, I'll I'll give a preview of it for everybody just because it's a really curious thing. It's two left. Unfortunately, my USB cord won't reach all the way over there, so I'll pull the board over here and give you guys a preview of it at the very end. But for time's sake, I need to open these. Oh, that's cool. You touch your cat to roll over. That's freaking awesome. Two, four. All right, I'm just going to reset this one. And five. And four. Two and one. Let's spool here. And one. Just got it. Three. <laughs> Jazzy, wait. And then let's get the comb out of that. And here's our last lock, everyone. Yeah, okay, making sure I had to look around <laughs> to make sure I'm not missing any. There's so many. Oh, that's cool. My cousin's cat plays fetch with uh, her makeup brushes. It's the second cat I've ever heard that plays fetch. That's really cool. There we are. Oh, that feels good. All right. So since that's it, let's look at them all. Make some room here. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> let's look at them as a whole. So here's the I'm working on right now. You back up. Leave it. So all those woods over there are the picks I'm working on right now. You leave the camera alone. And here are the buttons. So get back over here. So here are her buttons. So you can see on them, like right here, she has her outside button, her play. She has a button for food over there by her food, but all she does, she'll come over here and press it. And that's how she tells me she wants to do something. So she has outside play. I'm not going to say this word because she'll want it. And I'm sorry everything's backwards on the screen. But yeah. So that's what she does. And uh, again, so these are all of my picks I'm getting ready to make. So if you guys are interested in me, keep a look out. Uh, look at my social media. I will have them up for sale soon along with all of these Morris locks. And once again, um, thanks everybody for joining. This has been fun. And yeah, here they are. So uh, I think with that and an ex successful pick. Yeah, there we go. I think with that and a successful pick of all these, I'm going to call this my stream and uh end it this has been a good three and a half hours y'all this is this was fun thanks for joining in uh thanks for the conversation a lot of great conversation and suggestions 
Um, if there's anything that you would like to see or learn or how to's, let me know. I'll create a video on it. Um, if there's anything you're interested in, let me know too. Cause yeah, I have all these for sale. Yeah, Marlon, uh, uh, reach out to me on social media and they're all in my, uh, YouTube profile. So you can find me on there. So I have all these for sale and then I also have all these for sale in here. So I got a lot of master pro series, different masters, um, all month. I have some, not that pack lock. <laughs> That's mine. Uh, different old style pack locks in here, which are really nice. These are great dead cores. Um, and this S and G will be up for sale as well. And then finally, um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to have some of my own custom picks, uh, for sale here really soon. As soon as I finish them up, uh, I'm trying to get moving on those because I would like to put them up at the same time as I put everything up else up for sale. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, follow me on social media and contact me through there and you'll definitely see posts about when it's all happening. Yeah. Thanks, Marlon. All right, everyone. I'm going to call this a stream. Thanks for coming by. And Brian, yeah, thanks for joining up. This has been great. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I... I honestly did not expect to live stream picking all these at once, but um, you all came in and you entertained me while I was doing it. So here we are. They're all picked and uh, uh, good day. All right, everyone. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. That was a